Hello again everyone. So the camera just cut off, um, but we are back and we were in the middle of talking about laundry. So we're picking up to somewhere close to where we left off and where the camera cut off. Yes. So laundry. <laughs> I believe we were speaking about the, the summer wear, yes. uh, washing clothes. They had specific clothes in summer for washing. These were uh, suits that were made out of uh, linens and cottons, which were meant to be washed and starched to give them a little more body. They didn't have the same structure as a wool garment, uh, but they did help with uh, being uh, breathable and lightweight uh, and light colors for summer, but they did require washing um, largely because uh, a lot of Victorian laundering ideas was not from dirt from the outside. Of course, there is that dirt that needs to be cleaned, but the idea with that was you could just brush the dirt away off of the surface. But a lot of the the dirt or filth that the Victorians were worried about was from the human body. Uh, so you actually had things like your shirts and underwear, which was meant to protect your outer garments. Uh, so those would be washed and then your suits uh, and for women, the dresses and things wouldn't have to go through the intense laundering process of getting wet, fully soaked and wet. Um, which could be quite damaging to a wool garment like this and shrinking or anything like that. So would you have, for the most part, people would have like the, the one suit or they would have how many? Really depended on the, the social class. Um, there's uh, some people who only had one suit and this would be their Sunday best. Uh, and then there's others who uh, had huge wardrobes. They mentioned that a, a man working in town should have four business suits and then uh, about the same number of country or um, house suits that would have been his daily sort of um, casual uh, suits, and then uh, one sort of frock suit or f very formal suit, and then his dinner suit um, for a man working in the, in the city. Um, here in Canada, in Vancouver, Frontier, could have been very, very different, um, and much to the taste of the individual. So what other accessories or things would be? Yes, so we have uh, two things to complete uh, any outfit like this. Of course, uh, you can't go out with your uh, cane. Uh, this is, I believe, a, a, uh, an English-made cane. Um, there's a, a hallmark from Birmingham. Uh, sterling silver top. Uh, I can't remember what kind of wood this is, but it's a fairly common wood for sticks. Uh, and so that would have been a very important accessory. Um, this is a, a gift from a, a friend, so I'm particularly proud of that one. She has very good taste in, in walking sticks. And then even more important than the cane is to have your head covering. Uh, and in this case, with a, a formal outfit like this, you have the top hat. And then um, this is one from uh, Club and Sturts of Vancouver. And this is actually from the, the museum here. Uh, so that's the, a very nice piece here. So I'll let you get into some of the details. Yes, just to show off a bit of this up close. So of course you have the, the hat there. Uh, many different kinds of hats. Uh, top hat being a very common one that we can bring to mind easily. Uh, but to show some of the, the pieces up close, here we have uh, the little tie pin I had mentioned. It's a toboggan and snowshoes. Uh, you can see here the, the silk and all the different patterns and colors in the tie and in the vest, the watch chain, and those, those wonderful glass buttons uh, with the little sort of, I believe it's probably a, a copper, uh, copper dust swirled in there. Uh, the watch chain, of course, there's a watch attached to the chain there. And that would button really quite high compared to modern coats. Uh, the collar, you can see really how high that is, two and a half inches. Uh, the highest they got was about three inches, um, three and a quarter. But also to give you uh, a look at the, the back here, the back of the coat, two buttons there, uh, those wonderful shaped body coat seams, and the vent 
Uh, this vent uh, would have made walking and sitting easier. Uh, there's a pleat either side, uh, but also one very interesting feature about these coats is pockets. Where were the pockets? You can see, unlike my suit coat, there's no pocket flaps on the side. The pockets are actually in there, in the back, in the vent. And they're actually quite large pockets. You can fit a whole book or um, probably uh, a whole sort of bottle. You can fit flasks in there. Um, it was common to stick your newspaper in there um, and then it would kind of s rolled up and stick out. It looks funny now to us, but you see it in a, a lot of um, punch cartoons or sometimes uh, street photography. And so that would have been easy to get to. There's also another one on the other side. So yeah, that there with the the cane and the, the hat, that's the, the whole outfit. And the ties, if we could get a little look at yes. some of those patterns. Oh. Yeah, just to, if you want to look at those there, those are two more of the, the tie patterns. Well, thank you so much, Parker, for this. Yes, thank um, you. That was lovely. It was very educational. Um, and join us next Tuesday where we'll be talking about hair jewelry. So we will see you then.